Hansel and Gretel by Werner Stasko A new version Deep within a dense forest, a father, his children Hansel and Gretel, and their stepmother lived in a small cottage. Their family struggled to make ends meet, and the stepmother, who had always been cold and calculating, grew increasingly resentful of the children. One day she convinced the father to take the children into the forest and abandon them, promising that this would bring prosperity to their struggling household. The father reluctantly agreed, but Hansel and Gretel overheard the plan. The stepmother had instructed the father to leave them where the trees grew thickest. As night began to fall, Hansel and Gretel realized they were lost. As they wandered deeper, the canopy overhead grew thicker, filtering the sunlight and casting the forest floor in an eerie emerald green hue. Fireflies flickered like little tiny lanterns, leading Hansel and Gretel deeper into the woods. It was here, in this forsaken place, that they stumbled upon the sugary aroma wafting from the witch's gingerbread house. The sweet scent was a beacon of hope, drawing them closer to the old woman's trap. But even the house, with its inviting appearance, seemed to hold a dark secret. The windows made of sugar glass refracted the moonlight, casting rainbow-colored shadows on the ground. The roof, adorned with icing and candies, seemed to lean in, as if listening to their every move. Gretel's sharp instincts sensed the danger lurking beneath the house's sugary facade. And yet, driven by hunger and desperation, they pushed open the door, stepping into the witch's lair, where their fate awaited. A kindly old woman invited them in, offering them food and shelter. But beneath her warm smile was concealed a sinister intent. She had built the house to lure children and devour them. The witch, with her warty nose and wicked grin, cackled with glee, thinking she had finally caught her next meal. She imprisoned Hansel and fattened him up, planning to cook and eat him. However, Hansel, being the clever and resourceful boy he was, observed the witch's method of checking on their weight. She would feel his fingers through the bars, ensuring they were growing plumper by the day. Her eyesight was very bad. Hansel devised a plan. He whispered to Gretel, When the witch comes to check on us, I'll hold out a thin stick instead of my finger. She'll think we're still skinny and won't suspect a thing. The witch arrived, her bony fingers grasping the stick, expecting to feel Hansel's frail finger. But instead, she felt only the thin, dry wood. Convinced that Hansel was still underweight, she left, muttering to herself about needing to fatten them up further. As Hansel and Gretel continued to outsmart the witch, they knew their time was running out. The witch, growing increasingly impatient, decided to take matters into her own hands. Enough of this waiting, the witch cackled, her eyes blazing with malice. 
She dragged Hansel out of the cage and began preparing the oven, her intention clear. Gretel offered to help the witch with the baking, pretending to be obedient. As they worked, Gretel carefully observed the witch's movements, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. The oven, now heated to a fiery blaze, was ready. The witch ordered Gretel to push Hansel inside. But Gretel stood firm, pretending to struggle with the weight. Help me, witch! Gretel pleaded, her voice laced with false desperation. The witch, eager to claim her victim, stepped forward to assist. At that instant, Gretel seized her chance. With a fierce determination, she shoved the witch into the open oven. The witch's shrieks were drowned out by the roar of the flames. Hansel and Gretel cautiously explored the witch's house. They stumbled upon a hidden door. Hansel pushed it open, revealing a narrow stairway. At the bottom of the stairs, they found themselves in a small, damp chamber. In the center of the room, a large, ornate chest sat atop a decrypt pedestal. The chest's lid had a rusted lock hung from the front. Hansel carefully examined it. After a few moments, he discovered a small hidden catch. With a satisfying click, the lock disengaged and the lid creaked open. Inside, they found a trove of glittering jewels, gold coins, and magical artifacts. With their newfound wealth, they returned home to find their stepmother gone. Their father, realizing his mistake, welcomed his children with open arms. From that day forward, Hansel and Gretel lived happily, their bonds strengthened by their trials. As for the father, he learned a valuable lesson about listening to his heart and not the cunning words of others. And so the family of three lived contentedly surrounded by the beauty and wonder of the forest. Enjoy my new series Oliver and Chumpy, 19 video books with about 500 pictures. There is text, but I also read it aloud for the younger children. I have written 65 stories and had them illustrated at great cost for your children's fun. Oliver is an elegant tomcat and Chumpy is his lady friend. Oliver loves to ride in Chumpy's pouch when they go for adventures together. Please find a link to the first book in the description of this video. Please always subscribe and like if you find my effort interesting. Thank you so much.